music of Turkey has such a wonderful array of traditional string instruments. But while I was passing through, I had to stop by Istanbul Technical University to talk to Tolgahan Çolu, developer and proponent of the adjustable microtonal guitar. about the microtonal guitar. Uh, straight away, um, guitarists looking at this instrument will notice a few things yeah. that's slightly different. I mean, the body is similar um, similar to a, a normal classical guitar, but why don't you walk us through the, the, the differences? Okay, uh, this is called an adjustable microtonal guitar mm -hmm. because there's a whole bunch of history of microtonal guitars mm -hmm. with the holes on the fretboard or uh, some other types of movable fretted guitars, but this is uh, the subgenre is the movable fretted uh, adjustable microtone guitar. Okay. Um, basically, I will show you the how it works. Uh, all the frets are movable uh, yeah. along the fretboard. So let's see. Right. So I did a quarter tone now. Let's take it back. And uh, a special uh, characteristic of this guitar, and which differentiates it from the other microtonal guitars, uh -huh. is that you can remove the frets, uh, you don't want. need, uh -huh. and then of course you can insert them in a very practical way, uh, where you need. So that's great because uh, for this uh, it is unique. Yes. And so I can see that there are the small little uh, recesses in the in the, um, in the in the neck there. There's a small little yeah. kind of channel. These are channels uh -huh. all along the fretboard. Right. Yeah. So uh, what is special about this guitar is just the upper uh, part of the uh, neck. So this is what I designed uh, ten years ago, right. in 2008. Yeah. It was a research project at Istanbul Technical University, mm. and uh, then you know you cut those channels or slots. Uh, with a CNC machine, and then prepare hundreds of small frets. Right, yeah. And then uh, here we go, you can play any type of microtonal music genres, not only traditional music of Turkey, of course you can play Arabic music, Kurdish music, Turkish music, whatever, mm -hmm. but in addition Indian music, Balinese mm -hmm. Gamelan music, mm -hmm. I played one. Yes. Um, then of course Renaissance Baroque tunings, uh, just intonation, the natural harmonics, uh, quarter tone music, any uh, mm. division of octave. Mm. So any type of uh, microtonal music can be played on it. Mm. Great. Well, so let's talk about uh, microtonal music because as, as you listed all of these different applications yeah. um, and there's a really good video I saw of your, your experiment with the Bach, uh, I think it was a prelude. Yes. Uh, and it's interesting because obviously coming from uh, the Turkish perspective, you, the, the system of... Uh, of uh, Intonation, I guess, or, or even the scale system, the makam system, mm. is different than uh, than what the classical guitar was was set yeah. up to do. Um, so why don't, you, why don't we talk a little bit about the, right. about, about, the about that tuning? Okay, uh, first of all, the music of Turkey, the traditional music of Turkey, is monophonic. So uh, now, gradually, I started to understand as well. Uh -huh. But I understand that what is very rich. In this geography, I think two main things. One is the scales with many microtones. So at some point you might have the hundreds or more than 100 different scales. So it's not just major and minor or just seven modes, but it's more than hundreds. In theory, it's 500, uh -huh. but you know, in practice, it's a bit more than hundreds. But in addition, all this type of style that you play on these scales, the ornaments, the ornamentation is gorgeous. Mm. Um, of course, you have to know the melodic development rules. For example, uh, the music of Middle East is based on makams. Mm. And makams is 
from a very uh, rough uh, Western perspective, is a scale with microtones. But right. it's not. So, yeah. and we should probably clarify the the tone. There are tones if you're looking at a, a piano where yeah. everything is uh, at equal distance away. It's yes. actually uh, tuned slightly differently, a bit sharp or flat from a Western perspective. That's the, yes. the idea of the macabre. Exactly. Yeah. Any tone, half than a, uh, less than a half tone, mm -hmm. is a microtone, mm -hmm. and uh, the music of Turkey is microtones. So it's not possible to play it on the standard piano or nor on the cl classical guitar, standard classical guitar. Um, so you have to use those microtones because when you think that, okay, we don't have polyphony in this geography, mm. but oh, so is it that uh, simple or that primitive uh, like the scales? No, mm. it's in my opinion as rich as mm. the polyphony in the Western world mm. because when you listen to those melodies, uh, because I, you know, I've been trained as a classical guitarist, so more Western, uh, from a Western perspective. Mm. But then, in my last 15 years, I dived into this uh, world of makam, and you know, you listen to the recordings, and it's impossible to imitate it. Even though you make the ornaments, you can do the microtones, mm. uh, and also one step further is you have to know the rules of modulations for each makam each mode, uh, melodic development of each mode, mm. the some special uh, rules of melody, so it's very rich in its world. Right, so the, de the depth is in yes. a different area, so yeah. while uh, Western music it, it seems to be more complex in the, the harmonic progression and how, how notes sound against each other, yeah. you're saying that the sort of linear uh, thread of, of uh, Turkish music is uh, there's a, uh, an, an insane uh, richness. Yeah, not only Turkish music, it's the uh, Arabic music, Persian music, and mm. also, of course, Indian music. Mm. This uh, richness of the uh, melody, the, mon the monophonic texture, uh -huh. is uh, so rich. But of course, it sometimes have um, some common uh, characteristics with the European or Western music. Uh, I mean, for example, the main makam of Turkish music is Rast makam. Mm. So. Uh, it's a major scale, but with a natural major third ah. and natural or just major seventh. So what is natural? It's the harmonics. Yeah. Like uh, this is uh, the any vibrating string ah. creates this fifth harmonic. So for example, this is D, mm -hmm. and this is F sharp, mm -hmm. 14 cents lower than a, a semitone. Right. So it's not possible for you to play this on the piano, on the classical guitar, yeah. but uh, for example the main makam of Turkish music has this major third mm -hmm. instead of the semitone. Right, yeah. So you're, you're getting that pitch from the, the natural vibrating string. Yes. And uh, a normal guitar isn't, <laughs> isn't yeah. tuned that way. But you can, can't, you can uh, achieve that uh, on the fre uh, fretless right. guitar as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why we have a fretless guitar in Turkey. It's very popular. Uh -huh. At well. this point, it got pretty technical about tuning and intonation. If you are interested, please check out the description of this video for links to Tolga Han's other videos. Uh, so uh, let's talk about the application of it, uh, because um, obviously uh, it works very well playing makam music of, of Turkey. But I'm also interested in uh, the way that it relates to the other Turkish instruments, the balama and uh, uh, tambour and everything. Uh, they, they're they're playing in that in that world of a, yeah. of, of a, a, a kind of a fixed temperament uh, for each piece. So can you talk a bit about yeah. how that works? Sure. Uh, I almost play with all traditional uh, instruments in Turkey mm. in this uh, t uh, ten years. Uh, for it's very interesting uh, because I watched one of your videos with Kanun. Uh -huh. So. I measured many uh, canon livers in Turkey and the average for the Turkey, Turkish canons is 72 equal temperaments. So each uh, liver changed the tone by 17 cents. Right, that's the increment. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. for example, if I play Rast Makam with a canon, mm -hmm. this F sharp would sound a little bit high. Ah, okay. So it must be three cents 
lower, but it's a very yeah. tiny. Uh -huh. So, because the canon uh, is, you know, is the reference point. For example, if there's a canon in a Turkish music ensemble, it must be the reference point because the microtones are there, are, are fixed. Here's a short clip from an interview I did with canon player Maya Yusuf. The canon, uh, as it translates, the word canon in Arabic uh, translates literally as the law. Okay. The reason why is because this is one of the main instruments of the traditional Arabic ensemble. And also because it has so many strings, 78 uh, strings, the rest of the ensemble depends on it for tuning purposes. In our world, it's 17 cents, so a uh, half tone is divided into 6. Ah, uh, and whole tone is divided into 12. Right. And octave to 72. And it's, I think, a very good system. Then you can play all the makams of Turkish music right. with that system. I like that 72 equal temperament for Turkish music mm. because I think all the microtones are there. So if you have a 72 note instrument, you can play Turkish music. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, but obviously this is a, a much better system uh, where you can uh, adjust it to, yes, to, what, to what's yeah, needed. Yeah, and you know, if you put 72 um, per octave frets, mm -hmm. uh, it's impossible to play the normal guitar. I mean, mm -hmm. if you put them like a standard yes. guitar frets, it's, not, it's yeah. not practical, no one can play it. Yeah. But when it's adjustable, I just put the frets that I need yes. for the uh, next song or for the concert that I'm going to play. Mm -hmm. So it's a bunch of frets, but still not that hard. Yes. So you can still manage with your classical guitar technique. So let's talk about uh, your your background, because I, I assume you, you've come from a classical guitar background, as yeah. you were saying. Um, and so how does that relate to, uh, you know, I, I'm thinking about the fretted instruments of traditional Turkish music, like the balama and um, tambor yeah. in particular. Um, how did you sort of combine those approaches? Yeah, after a while, I've been playing guitar for more than 25 years. Of course, after a while, I live in Istanbul. It's the melting point of, you know, Asia, Europe. And of course, after a while, if you want to do something original for the music world, uh -huh. you start thinking, what, how can I play our tra my tra our traditional music on the instrument that I'm, I've been playing for a long time? Mm. So, you know, uh, for years, uh, I tried many things, you know, I tied frets on a fretless guitar, like balama or tambour. Right, yeah. And, you know, it, it buzzes so much because it's, the frets are so low, mm. uh, so it didn't work. And uh, then I think about different designs. Oh, what if I have fretless uh, on the half of the fret, fretboard and fret it for the basses? Mm. Uh, still, then somebody uh, played that. Uh, but it's, of course, not practical so much. Uh -huh. But then, after a long research during my PhD about the history of microtonal guitars, starting in London in 1829 with the, an harmonic guitar, so then I uh, see all the designs before me, uh -huh. oh, then I, then I <laughs> come up with a better, and uh, the design that I needed yes. for a long time. Uh, and, uh, and after I have it, of course the problem was, okay, I have the guitar, I can play anything, but what, what am I going to play? Mm. Uh, then I contacted with the composers mm. from all around the world and they composed more than 40 pieces. Uh, so I collaborated with more than 40 composers wow. in all different genres of microtone music, mm. quarter tone, just intonation, makam. Balinese tuning, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's endless, uh, and also I start arranging the uh, music of Turkey. So now I can say that I have around hundred music. I also started organizing microtonal guitar competition. Oh, okay. It's yeah. the first in the world. So uh, how not on the adjustable guitar by taping ah, I see. small frets on your own guitars. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, what I did it was uh, so basic. Four years ago, I just ordered the fret. Um, the wire. The, the wires. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then go to my luthier and try to cut it to one centimeter. Uh -huh. And then file the bottom. 
and then try it on my tape it on my <laughs> yeah. own classical guitar. Yeah. And when I see that it works, okay, that's it. It's not unique to me. Uh -huh. uh, John Schneider, the pioneer of microtone guitar, mm. has been using that for a long time. But um, I see that it's very easy and mm. very cheap. Yes. So what I did was uh, sending it for free still to anyone who wants. Right. Yeah. Uh, for example, for my competition, I announced that okay, anyone who wants from all around the world, I will send it for free. Right. And I sent up to now 600 frets to 120 people all right. from maybe 15 countries. And also, whenever I perform somewhere, I give, after my concerts, after my seminars, yeah. I give one or two. Yeah. I can also give some to you. Look, you might get an entry for me as well. Yes. <laughs> well, dear viewer, I was lucky enough to get some frets from Tolga Han when he showed me around his office at Istanbul Technical University. Very dusty, because right. I stopped playing that. Right. But still, and so that's know. actually, all the frets are fixed there, is that? Or? Yes, all, all, of, all of them are fixed. Uh, it's based on the music theorist Ozan Yarman's uh, system uh -huh. uh, for polyphonic Turkish makam music. Right. So, in, in his theory, all the makams can be harmonized with this uh, 24 notes per octave. Right. But une unequal division of the octave into 24. Ah, oh, right. Yeah. So this is for, for playing for playing harmony as well as the, yes. the melodic line, yeah. yeah. We, have to, we have to accept that this is really hard to play. Yes. <laughs> because the reference points are so limited. Yes, yeah. It tires your brain out. I can imagine, <laughs> yeah. So that's an electric guitar, uh, electric fixed fret uh, microphone guitar. All right. Uh, that's my friend's Honor Turkmen's, that's a baritone. Wow. So we have bass strings and... Um, it's made by Chalian Erge, Turkish luthier. Mm. So now I'm trying to find an electric guitarist yeah. for doing some experiments on it. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's nice. And this, this part is fretless. Oh, wow. So you, you can actually, you could play any, something up here. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Here's my fretboard. <laughs> All right. So my idea was this uh, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so you've got everything in yeah. the little slots there, yeah. And here's the one with Lego. <laughs> my my son Atlas. Atlas oh yes. Did the, so he imitated. <laughs> so it's it's a good one. Look, yeah, yeah. There's a microphone here. Ah uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna play a anonymous traditional tune called Fidaida. We can. Uh, it's an Asia Minor or Anatolian folk song. Mm -hmm. The score that we have for this piece was. Uh, D, 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 A, D, A, B flat, D. Mm. So it's a, it's a chord, the open mm. uh, chord. Uh, then let's talk about the microtones. Mm -hmm. uh, when that's a f one of Anatolian folk scales, let's put it, or mm. makams. Mm. So when it's ascending, it takes a microtone, this one. But descending, mm. so so 35 cents lower, uh, this fret is played on balamas. Uh -huh. So I need it, but what if I don't play this? It's very high for Turkey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's put it. Uh. So that's out of tune for 80 million. Yes. <laughs> so uh, it must be. Microtonal ornaments is very characteristic. Mm. What is it? We have a trill from the semitone to a microtone. Ah. So it's ah. not chromatic trill. Ah. It's microtone. So it's, le it's less than a semitone. Yes, yeah. it's very important. Mm -hmm. So and you can you can hear that it, it does have a particular flavor. Yes. You know? It's, and it's almost like the, the wood, you know, has a sort yeah, of... Sure. Uh, yeah. yeah, without those flavors, uh, we don't have a music. Right. Traditional music.
Thanks for watching. If you like what we do here at The Stringdom, please hit like and subscribe. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram, and please explore more Stringdom interviews.